So welcome to another vlog here on Wolf of Dubai and as you might see I have a slightly sunburn because I made a lot of sport today outdoors and uh, if you didn't follow me yet on Instagram make sure to follow me on Instagram Wolf of Dubai Danny and uh, you can follow me every single day on the things I'm doing which videos I release and so many other things so if you want to be more part of me uh, make sure to follow me there but let's talk about Tesla Tesla had amazing delivery numbers record breaking delivery numbers not only for Tesla and the EV market section but any car manufacturer ever couldn't produce that many electric vehicles okay that's fact and the stock on Monday actually went up about 5% like we predicted in our live stream that we had on Sunday now what actually is happening and currently the stock as of this recording Tuesday morning is a little bit down and the overall market seems to not appreciate it that much and uh, something like this we call usually anomaly okay something that is not in order usually or not like the previous or the average okay and our friend here on Twitter Gary Black if you haven't followed him yet make sure to do it he is a fantastic Tesla bull and he's absolutely having very very nice information out there about Tesla stock and Tesla future and so on and he put a table together I don't know if it's his or, or someone borrowed I think uh, oh it's it's by blue so he actually uh, reposted that and he said you know over the past five quarters Tesla stock price has increased every quarter between the day after volumes post and the day of earnings release average 30% gain importantly in three of the last four quarters Tesla has fallen on the day after earnings sell the news so what he is saying that on average building towards the numbers this tesla stock gained 30 percent and 70 percent chance of after the numbers that stock sold off okay sell the news so buy the rumors sell the news there's this saying on wall street okay which is quite interesting this means that usually we should have seen now more of a uh, increase of stock price okay and there is one guy that I also respect very very much on Wall Street that will you know comment why we should see a huge rally in April he calls it the face ripper rally so a huge rally and we will talk about that in the second category of this video but first let's dive into those gains of those uh, quarter releases okay so here you can see the uh, quarter Q4 Q1 2020 Q2 2020 and so on so you can see here the deliveries when it was released and then you know uh, how much it actually went up after one day after five days and so on so you can see here uh, here for example in the very first uh, position here it was $86 and after five days we were already at uh, $96 then in the Q I think 1 2020 it was $90 or 91 and it went to 114 then you know Q2 2020 it went from 223 and then uh, just five days later it was um, 280 almost so you get the point but though you need to understand that the 2020 year was something quite significantly and the only negative I have to say here is that uh, most of this as you can see is 2020 which was a very special the best year for Tesla so it's yes it's maybe guidance but shouldn't be like your holy grail for what will happen in the next couple of days okay but now let's jump into what uh, Tommy Lee says Well, let's go ahead and bring Tom Lee in. He says the market rally has only just started. So Tom, of course, the head of research at Fundstrat, Fast Money Friend. He's calling for a face ripper of a rally. Tom, good to see you. Um, face ripper is not a technical term. It is a term that you're using to describe what we're, what we're in. So what, what does that mean? What, what kind of rally is a face ripper rally? Um, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a characteristic in the sense that uh, institutions raised almost 200 billion of cash since the start of the year, so they've turned quite cautious, and they've been uh, fading or selling. 
their tech and growth holdings, but they've only just begun to nibble on the stocks you guys are talking about, the epicenter. And so I think there's a level of surprise coming in April because we already had a strong finish beginning Wednesday of last week. Now, two, it's really three days of strong rallies, and history shows that this is really building up to what could be a, you know, potentially S&P 4200 before the end of the month. So something that is both really strong, but more importantly, quite a big surprise for institutions. Tom, it's Karen. Uh, thanks for being on, and thanks for getting it pretty much right at every single turn for the last year. Let me just ask you, though, what is the thing that it would most threaten this face ripper rally? Um, well, speaking to our clients, and you know, our, our team is engaged with our institutional clients almost nonstop, uh, there's two things weighing on their minds. The first is the, the fact that there's the growing prevalence of mutations around COVID and the lockdowns, and it's their fear that this is going to create another wave in the U.S. and maybe set back the entire opening. And, and the second is really the talk that even though there's infrastructure plans underway, you're taking it out of the other hand by raising taxes. And I think both personal and corporate are big issues, but obviously, as you know, corporate taxes really seems to have some traction in Congress. Tom, it's Tim. Sorry. You know, my, my question for you is around some of the cyclical sectors. I think you like, you've talked about energy. I know you like oil services. Is this a structural call or is this a, a technical call in terms of underweight dynamics and, and really where uh, the rotation in this market is going? Um, it's a bit of both. I think what people are sort of overlooking is energy has a, a lot of positive characteristics. You know, one is that uh, there is a pretty steep decline in supply coming because there's been so little um, or non-existent capital investment. Um, so production's going to slow. We have yet to see the inflection of demand coming from jet fuel, especially business travel. And, and when that comes on later in the year, that's going to really tighten the market. And of course, it adjusts through higher price. And that's going to raise also the umbrella around uh, EV and battery. And as you know, as EV mandates go up, it's going to raise the umbrella for oil prices. And then for the, and for the stocks, uh, they're almost completely unowned. Most of our clients have zero weights in energy, but energy just produced a 30% gain in the first quarter. Uh, in the history of the S&P since 1920, that's only happened seven times where a sector rose 30% in a quarter, in the first quarter, and 100% of the time, so seven out of seven times, that sector continued to actually rise through year end. The median is 12%. But if you take out technology in 1987, it's more like 15 to 20 percent. So energy might still have 20 percent relative performance to the S&P into year end, and that would take its total return to, you know, potentially 70 percent this year. So I think there's still a lot of upside. Tom, Karen mentioned bank earnings coming up. We're all watching those, obviously. What are you listening for in terms of, you know, the, some of the commentary out of these bank CEOs? Um, I mean, there's a lot of important things to watch because, as you know, banks are really the other side of the ledger of the economy. So it's it's demand for credit, but it's also credit quality. I have a feeling a lot of these banks are going to be talking about really improving visibility and confidence among their customers. And as you know, once CEOs become confident, the next wave is mergers. So I think there is going to be a, a pretty big wave of mergers around the epicenter stocks. Um, but the other sort of side of the coin for the banks is and I think a lot of companies are going to discuss this, they have a really good idea how to rationalize their cost structure because they've had essentially 100% of their employees working from home for the past year. And while it it's not going to be appropriate to necessarily reorganize the business today, in the next two years, every single major cyclical company and even every tech company can rationalize their operational footprint pretty dramatically. So I think that there's still a huge operating leverage story, something we've been writing about, but I think you know, relative to street consensus on 2022, I think a lot of the cyclical groups are 40 to 100 percent higher on 2022 EBIT versus consensus. So in the conclusion of this video, make sure it's the last day. I extended it for one last day because I got so many messages, guys. The 10X Masterclass, 10% off with the code 10 space 10 for you out there to get, you know, lifetime access to the Discord. 150 episodes that I never published here. This is almost like a half a year of content 
and uh, you can get a better investor and live your life more freedomly if you follow this how I did it you know in just a couple of months and year I totally quit the 9 to 5 and went full time investing this is possible guys and I put all of my knowledge there this is information that is all around but are you having the time to read you know 20 30 40 books on investing and try things out with your money I did exactly that over the last decade and put it all into this online course and you can watch it anywhere in the world anytime you want or have free time so check it out this would be highly appreciative as you support the channel as well now tesla tesla is my favorite stock okay no question about that what will happen over the next couple of days nobody knows okay but i definitely love to invest more into tesla and this is actually what will be my game plan now over the next couple of days building towards this earnings to build a little bit more of a tesla position okay maybe with some german call options you know maybe a little bit with uh, usual stock packages you know maybe you know 10 20 30 thousand dollars into stocks i will have to see how much cash i have available how much of it i want to put into my other place but i definitely you know post this kind of things in my discord group and i always uh, make sure that to keep you up to date with my daily vlogs so make sure to subscribe and like this video as well and i really want to make sure that you are you know aware that tesla is in the step where they are just starting to grow, okay? They proved the concept of mass production of cars, electric cars. They proved that they have a huge advantage for batteries. And now th this whole advantage is slowly, slowly, this is the most important part, slowly, you know, unfold in the next couple of months and years. So, so Elon Musk, for example, said in a tweet that, you know, we might have a shortage this year of batteries. But the next year will look totally different and they can produce even more cars and more batteries for, for not only for the cars, but only for the energy business that is absolutely growing and they have more clients that they can cater now as this, this moment. Same goes with the cars. If they can produce, you know, 500,000 cars and obviously sink the cost a little bit as well per car, obviously they would sell every car, okay? I'm pretty much sure. The cars are great. The product is great. The brand is great the infrastructure is fantastic so all of this combined is exactly what the future looks like you saw this at amazon you saw this in apple you saw this in other very very successful brands and companies over the last couple of years and it's always like on the repeat mode and that's why i'm uh, loving tesla so much because i barely had one stock that has this high of conviction obviously never financial advice make your own research and i see you obviously tomorrow because the grass is greener on the other side mm -hmm.